Right, so here we go. Wiki Goss back. It's New Year. It's 2020. We've got 2020 vision. We're looking ahead. We're going to be super on the ball. New Year, new us. New you, New Year, new us. New clothes. Emperor's new clothes. Yeah. <clears throat> right, da- here we go. Dan's not wearing anything. Oh, my God. <laughs> dun, 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 dun. Hello. I'm Dan. Hello, I'm Simon. And this is the Wikicast, a podcast where Wikipedia takes us to a random article each week and we talk about what we find. Simon, what are we talking about this year? This year, not the whole year, just this week specifically. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yes. d- Dan, we're, no, I quite like the idea that we randomise on an article and that's what we talk about the entire year. <laughs> we yeah, better hope it's a good one. Um, well, this week, at least, we are talking about Transylvania, Louisiana. Ah, now that's interesting. It's where the um, the protagonists of the Rocky Horror Picture Show come from, I believe. Mm. Um, well, I mean, that's not what we're going to talk about. We're going to talk about us, because we're selfish pricks, Dan. Um, how, how are you, you, you old I'm, son of a bitch? <laughs> uh, I'm really well. I'm really good. It, 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 it's been such a long time. October, I think? Uh, yeah, we saying? looked this up. The last episode came out in October, October Good 9th Lord. specifically. So uh, we, just to address that straight straight way, um, uh, I, I mean, basically, I've ta- I took a step back at the end of last year from all of my productivity. Um, so I wasn't making videos, I wasn't live streaming, I wasn't doing podcasts, um, just sort of to take a bit of a break and reset everything. Um, so uh, the prin- principal architect of this uh, of the pause in the Wikicast was myself. Uh, Dan was also. How busy would you say you were in the last quarter of last year? Oh, on a scale of one to ten, I'd say I was solidly cruising around nine and a half. Yeah, you had a pretty full was, on schedule. It was in insanely busy. Not only was was work. Um, this is work at Exeter Cathedral. Um, incredibly incredibly busy and there was so much to do and we had so many things on and not enough time um but also the choir was was just flat out we had uh, several bbc recordings um we were learning a new set of commissioned canticles by nico muley to celebrate the girls 25th anniversary um a recording of which is still available on bbc sounds or iplayer should you wish to listen well that'll be the first um, link in the show notes uh, bam look at that we're, so, we're we're back i don't know how we're many people actually actually look at the show notes because every episode i i have like about 10 or 12 things that i put in and i i have no idea let us know send us an email if you actually do click the show notes because i'd be interested i would be interested to see if all this works just for absolutely nothing Thing. moral of the story we were both incredibly busy and <clears throat> yes. uh didn't have time uh which was i thought it was a as as much as it was inconceivable to even think about recording a podcast because we were so so comically busy it, i really i pers- i really missed not having that yeah kind of by well we should w- say weekly or that two we, weekly you know we um saw each other most recently at our uh, friend hugo's new year's uh shindig uh, we mm. had a dinner party at his house in Westminster in the centre of London, and we were both quite drunk. We, we, I think we had quite a stereotypical drunk conversation. We were like, oh, "I miss you," you know. I, yeah. I really, oh, I is fucking best man. You're, you're, ah, oh, uh, you're just great. And why do we never talk anymore? <laughs> like, so, um, yeah, we, 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 we ended up talking about it and, um. Uh, and sort of decided that yes, let's commit to doing the podcast again. We both feel yeah. like our schedules can allow for it. My my mental health has uh, has allowed me to sort of get back to work now, and your schedule has calmed down a little bit. Um, it has, yeah. We should say that we are um, resuming the podcast on a regular schedule because the thing, one of the things that I think frustrated us and the audience last uh, last time we had a regular run was it it was irregular. Uh, we would miss weeks. We would upload on bizarre days, um, and I think it's nice having a show to look forward to. I don't know how many podcasts mm. you listen to, but I, I definitely like no, far too many. You know, knowing that th- an episode is coming. And so, what we're yeah. going to do is we're we're not going to go weekly because we think that's a bit unrealistic considering that sometimes we have to cancel the recording sessions because for example dan's got a choir rehearsal or i've got a filming trip that's coming up for example um so you know it's not going to work every week but we are going to commit here and now the first episode of 2020 we're going to commit to doing an episode every two weeks so it gives us wiggle room every every you know month to make two episodes Mm -hmm. and you know if we miss a recording session we can reschedule it so it's less frequent 
but hopefully more regular, if that makes sense. Yes, so, that's the plan. That's our that's our twenty twenty vision. Uh, yeah, vision, re- uh, resolution, commitment. Do you have any resolutions? New Year's resolutions, Dan? Do you believe in well, them? Now, I cooked. I cooked a lovely meal for my housemate and and friends. Uh, yeah, I want to. That no, wasn't yesterday. Day before yesterday, and one of the questions over a particularly fine roast chicken uh, that I that I um I cooked up was what are, what are, what is each other's New Year's resolutions? And to be honest, I haven't given it any thought at all. Mm. I don't. I don't have any. I th- my plan is just to kind of keep going on in a in a way it's a bit of a weird new year simply because this is the first year uh, as in going starting you know new year starting in january where i am properly out of education mm. i have a, i'm a i've got a proper kind of adulty job um i'm working monday friday nine till five um and I think it's been such a change and I've been so busy that I haven't really, I'm just going to basically keep going uh, in, in how, in how I've been in the, in the kind of the, the closing months of, of 2019. So no, I don't, in answer to your question, I, I don't have any new New Year's resolutions. I'm just going to keep going and try not to be a terrible human. Uh, that's the plan. Because I think it's a, te- it's a terrible time of year to try and make ch- I- abrupt changes in your life. Because Christmas is gone. You have a long period before you have to anything to look forward to, really. I mean, if you're a romantic, you're going to look forward to Valentine's Day. But really, you've not got a huge amount to look forward to until kind of, well, spring, I guess. Until the 21st of February, Simon. What is happening on the 21st of February, Dan? Oh, well, that's, that's yours truly's birthday. Oh, which is of course of of all the high days and feast days of the year. Um, Philip, my sparrow has no peer. Yes, um, <laughs> yeah. it's a it's an excellent day. Uh, oh well, yes. Yeah, so obviously, we, so people have Dan's birthday to look forward to, but um, you know, it's a terrible time to sort of I think say, oh, from now I'm going to do this, and I feel like that's why it's something like by halfway through January, most people have given up on a resolution. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I I've started. Uh, looking much more long term at my uh, planning, I think one of my the things that over the past couple of years I really fell into was only planning hand to mouth, so like doing week by week planning. Maybe look at a month uh, ahead, but then that would kind of be it. Um, whereas mm-hmm. I think it's really important to have a sense of perspective. So what I've started doing is planning year of objectives, so not New Year's resolutions, but objectives what of stuff I want to accomplish in the year, and then break that down by month. Of if I want to reach that objective, what do I need to have done in each month? Um, mm-hmm. And you know, so some of the, the the top priority for 2020 is be healthy, which I feel like I've regularly not prioritized. Um, so you know, that's number one objective. And then there's other stuff like reaching a certain number of YouTube subscribers. There's handing in a certain project, which I can't talk about. Uh, I want to go on um, holiday with with Pixel Girl to Madrid because we've said that we wanted to go back. Um, a massive milestone this year is I'm going to be celebrating my 30th birthday. Oh, oh my god! I know. <laughs> I can't. Be- I can't. I can't believe that. I can't either. I swear, I'm still 21. Um, oh golly! It's. I'm going to be. I'm going to be 23. Oh god! Oh god! You're making me feel old, which, Dad. Which feels. I mean, to me, that feel. I was talking about this with somebody as well. I think. I don't know what it is, but there's something about 22, turning 22 and turning 23 feel really different. Well, because one has a Taylor Swift song associated with it. Well, indeed. I think also 23 sounds more of a proper adult age than 22. You're entering into your mid-20s. Your mid-20s famously stretch from 23 to 29. Uh, sorry, 28. Um, and then you have your late so you 20s. You don't sound bitter at all there. 29. 29. Yeah, I, I, I'll accept that I'm now in my late 20s because I'm 29. Last year I was in my mid 20s. Um, and it's a hard threshold to go across, you know? Um, but yeah, I agree. 30 it's, years old. Golly. That's yeah, I don't bad. know what I'm going to do for it, really. Because I've got. Um, you know, I've got I've got sort of uni friends, and I've got friends from home, and I've got YouTube friends. And it's it, it's almost like throwing a. Um, you know, thinking about a big event like a 30th or like a wedding anniversary, I guess, is like throwing a bachelor's party in that, you know, really you want lots of different friendship groups to, you know, to see all of your friends. Mm-hmm. But I, I feel like I'm going to have to pick 
one group of friends, um, which will most likely result in another lads road trip to Warhammer World in Nottingham. Um, Absolutely, <laughs> because I did that at the end of um, last year, and it was it was absolutely cracking. Um, and I have various objectives for for Warhammer this year. I'm, I'm getting I, that's something that I've I've learned. I, I suppose if it might be a classed as a resolution is to actually spend more time on things that I just enjoy doing and aren't yes. for the sake of productivity. So like painting Warhammer. Pixelgar and I made a massive decision the other day. I am now podcasting live from uh, next to our piano. We bought a digital piano um, because Lovely. we wanted to be able to make music. And I've always wanted to be able to play the piano and learn how to play. Um, mm. So that's a thing that I'm going to do this year. So I don't really have resolutions either, I guess, as a, but I have objectives. Um, yes. I, I, for those of you who are in, into their um, uh, productivity type things, I would highly recommend Notion. That's what I've been using for keeping track of all my plans. Uh, and it's something that Thomas Frank uses and something that Ali Abdal uses, who are both great YouTube channels for this kind of thing. And uh, it's, it's definitely been one of the things that's turned me around since I sort of um, stepped back for a step back from public life. Um, Golly, you know, it's, you. It's, you should give you are you, reti- are you retiring? You're going to take a few weekends away to spend more time with your family. Are you a dodgy politician? Uh, uh, unlike uh, Meghan and Harry, who are retiring to spend less time with their family. Oh, yeah, quite. Um, yeah. So the notion is definitely been a big key tool. I recommend looking it up. Um, I watched I watched a good productivity video the other day from. God, what's her name? Ruby Ruby Granger. Ruby Granger. You mean the female version of you? She is an Exeter well, student who is basically like Hermione uh, from Harry Potter, and she is a female version of Dan. Even the well, sense of the fashion thing. is I the same. I hadn't even really. I I'd, I'd never really come across her before, um, and I was looking. I was. It was. It was quite good. I was. I was really pleasantly surprised. I was also so shocked that she. You know, she, for 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 such a kind of formative positive uh media youtube specifically personality mm. that she's in exeter and i hadn't really heard about it i mean i had who's the um there's another youtuber whose girlfriend is amber somebody oh you had them in the your english class she was in you. my she was in my was one of Casper my Lee? Uh, classics classic yeah maybe classic seminars and and I, I i guess she's not as much as a kind of creator as as ruby but um mm. But she maybe maybe we should have her on the podcast. I I'd be I, I that's something that I would like to put to our readers. Um, I would really like it if we got guests on this podcast because I know that um there are certain podcasts and I'd like to get to one later in the episode um that people mm-hmm. listen to because they like the chemistry between two people. Um, uh, but I think that there's definitely something to be said for mixing that up every that could be every other episode or it could be just every once in a while with you know. A guest, which we used to do, um, you know, we we, we've had some fantastic guests, um, and and we have lots of people, including Ruby, that I'd be very happy to have on the show. Um, I reckon mm. Lewis, as in of of the Yogs cast, uh, would would come on if I asked him nicely enough. Um, that would be great fun. Yeah, although he's probably sleeping for a month uh, at the moment. Yeah, uh, I bet after after Such the a, success of the Jingle Jam, a very busy bee. Yeah, he was on a ridiculous amount. Uh, it was that boy was. I mean, and obviously that was the other thing was that I was quite badly ill for a fair chunk of December. I got the Yog Plague. Half of the Yogs cast, for those of you who don't know, this group of YouTubers that I've been sort of working with a bit and who stream every day in December for charity. About half of them came down with a mysterious plague-like illness um mm. and uh lewis sailed through just kind of plowed on through like a man of, of complete willpower so once he's recovered maybe I'll, maybe i'll ask well him. there was there was a weird bug going around that time of year because i don't know if you read in the news but it it um it was norovirus I the, think. the england yeah the, the england cricket team came came down with it really um, oh, i missed that famously yeah and i mean i i i had it for i was out of action for three days or so Wow. And then randomly had um, my appendix nearly went, which was fun. <laughs> nearly, nearly, nearly burst, did it? It really did. Yeah, it nearly did. I had to go to hospital. And, and uh, by the time I was ve- eventually seen by a doctor, it had all gone down again. And they basically said, yeah, so um, it's probably going to go at some point. It might be the next hour, day, week, year. We don't know. But when you start getting that pain again, get to hospital 
as soon as you can because you if it ruptures it's really dangerous so jesus so that was well i'm glad you're all right god do you know what's do you know what's worse i thought it was really bad indigestion and it was on the night of one of the christmas with the cathedral choir concerts so i <laughs> sat out of the first half and then having sat down for a bit i thought i felt a bit better so went on and sang the rest of the second half. <laughs> Just put massive came... pressure on your... <laughs> yeah. So basically, I, I, I sang for about 45 minutes with quite acute pe- appendicitis, mm. went to went to lie down and couldn't lie down and promptly called... Uh, um, which is the non-emergency number? I always forget. 111? One, one, one? Uh, yes, the non-emergency one, yeah. Yeah, and I and they were they asked me several questions, and I, I heard his tone of voice change when I was qu- describing quite accurately where the pain was and what the pain felt like. Hmm. And at the end of this five minute phone call, while I'm kind of sweating with pain, he said, "Yeah, so we're going to dispatch an ambulance now." Um, I was like, "Oh right, okay." Um, Jesus, so that was, that <laughs> yes, was that's not what eventful. you want to hear. <laughs> not really, no. Blimey, do you want to talk about this yeah. article, by the way? <laughs> Yeah, golly, we should. How well, long have you been, we been recording for like 15 minutes? Like, I haven't actually talked about the article at all. Um, so the article that we got was Transylvania, Louisiana. Um, right. So famously, Transylvania is associated with sort of Dracula, but that's Transylvania in Romania. So that is, yeah. if I go on that wiki, I think it is it entirely within Romania. Uh, yes, central Romania. Um and is spooky. Um, whereas this, uh, I ah, it was named in the early nineteenth century by a Transylvania University alumnus, a Dr. W. L. Richards. And Transylvania University is uh, in Kentucky because, of course, it is. Uh, Incredible. Uh, hang on. So why is that called Transylvania? Uh, uh, was named for the colony of Transylvania, which is Latin for. Do you want to have a guess at the uh, the translation? Um, Sylvia is something to do with trees, isn't it? Uh, I believe so. Yeah, Sil- Silva. So, like, oh golly, I'm making, a, I'm butchering this. Uh, um, you don't have a degree in this. This is fine. I mean, yeah, that's the embarrassing. Thing. <laughs> um, so something to do with uh t- trees and like forests and ultra is like what comes after or be or like further or beyond or you know what you um, I, I think you're you're all, you, you're gonna get it with enough time uh, it's it's across the woods all right okay so, well, that's not too bad yeah, I, think, I think you had you had that really um and i have to admit i'd not heard of the colony of transylvania and that's because it was a very short-lived colony in 1775 founded by a land speculator uh who purchased cherokee lands um and later became part of kentucky there's i don't have enough time to read this whole article i think it was i think it lasted about two and a bit years was um, it on the same level as success as like jamestown or uh I, i'll be honest with you this this does actually look like a very interesting article but my my eyes are glazing over it just a wall of text um Fair enough. with accompanied by a little bit of artwork that looks a bit like it could have been in the parks and recs department in uh uh, oh god, a Pawnee. That's the one. Mm-hmm. Um, so yes, so Transylvania, Louis. Just to recap, everyone, Transylvania, Louisiana, was named by a alumnus of Transylvania University, which is so called after the colony of Transylvania. But oh, hang on, why was the colony called Transylvania? Just because it had a lot of woods in, I guess. Uh, yeah, why not? Let's go with that. Sure. Um, so there we. That's why it's called that. Um, and it is a a little bit of a nowheresville. It's in um the northern bit of of Louisiana state. Um, it has a population of seven hundred and forty three in the year two thousand. Um, and the U.S. Census Bureau doesn't have any stats on it. <laughs> that's wow. Basically, all I can tell you, uh, apart from the fact that um the general store in the town does sell Dracula and bat related merchandise. Um, oh, I wonder why they do that. Which is well, actually, there's a there's a great picture of the. So- oh God, this looks like it's from the eighties. When was this picture taken? There's a picture of the general store in Transylvania, um, and uh, yeah, taken in 1989, and it's it's really great. It's a retro picture with Transylvania it looks to be written in blood, uh, and then a black bat with its wings stretched underneath it and then general store in large friendly red letters 
Um, wow. Which is God. This is this is something that if you came across on like a dark, thundery night, you would genuinely think you were in a horror movie. Well, we found our new spot for the Wikicast 2020 convention. Yeah, Wikicon. <laughs> Wikicon. The the Transylvania General Store in Louisiana. I'm sure there's plenty of space. Um, I wonder if we have any listeners in Transylvania. Yeah. What are the 743 yeah. people? We're not. <laughs> Damn, we we'd be lucky to have any listeners after the after the gap that well, we left. This, this is true. Um, hello um, as, to as everybody you... who's listening, by the way, who's who's put up with that level of gap and is just excited to hear our voices again. We're very glad as to you, have as you, back. you talk through this, Simon. I'm just gonna pop on over to our statistics breakdown and see whether we have anybody in well i I would bet that we have some people in louisiana we know we have quite a few american listeners uh so view uh readers i mean i nearly called them viewers which is a greatest generation thing um i can't remember who it was but one of our readers put me on to the greatest generation as a podcast and i cannot thank that lucky lucky reader enough because good god it's my favorite thing at the moment i absolutely love that podcast if anybody listening is a fan of star trek the next generation and our style of humor dare i say um you absolutely should listen to the greatest generation it's incredible Uh, any luck with those stats any luck finding them stats then it's only the one stat actually um uh, you it, it comes as a great surprise that we have no listeners in louisiana at all i'm surprised we have no listeners at all at all uh Louis- we have a single listener in texas oh, which is close good grief um but but sadly no one in louisiana so if you're listening from from the 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 great us of a over the pond then and you have a friend who might like to listen to a silly podcast where to very to English ramble people about, about really it. very inane things, then do recommend them this podcast because they can be the f- the first and likely last <laughs> listener in in Louisiana. I'm just I'm looking at the wiki page for Louisiana because obviously, you know, it's a very uh, deep South uh, state. Um, right. You know, it's uh, it, it's going to be very republican um it's also about the population of wales it's got about 4.6 million people live in it um and according to wikipedia like other states in the deep south louisiana frequently ranks low in terms of health education development and high in measures of poverty in 2018 it was the least healthy state in the united states with a high levels of drug related deaths and excessive alcohol consumption and had the highest homicide rate in the united states since the 1990s um gosh so it's you know it's the wild south i guess um it's you know if you if you would if you survived long enough to listen to this podcast then uh, you probably got better things to do with your time frankly mm. um wow i've never been uh, no, no i have been to the south i went to texas and i've been to florida uh, on the uh, nasa trips that i did so i've been to florida i've been to america once and it was florida and I was two. Ah, so I guess you didn't However, remember very much. <laughs> I will be going to America in October. Oh, because Exeter Cathedral Choir are uh, going on tour. Oh, how very exciting! I know it's rather quite quite the, quite a treat. When was the last time they did um, an international tour? Do they do it every year? I think two years ago. No, they seem to do it every other year or every two years. So the last time they went to somewhere in Europe, I think, like, I can't remember, but they went somewhere. Okay. Um, but nowhere near, nowhere near as far flung as um, as the US of A. America. Oh, wow. That's going to be yes. exciting. You could you could meet up with some uh, with our one uh, one listener in uh, in Louisiana well, that's in Texas yeah. yeah oh yeah. oh that's fun sorry um i just had a, a, an email so whilst we were talking so um agency that's probably the best word that i'm with standard um just welcomed uh the great war team so that you know the youtube channel that did oh, cool. world war one great uh, you know week by week and i said yeah. oh hey flo um who's the sort of the chief creator behind it it's great to have you on board i've been a fan of the work for a long time and he's just replied with going likewise so oh. that's sweet um, I should. I, we could definitely get some people from Standard on this show. I mean, we had uh, Patrick from Tearzoo 
uh, which was one of my favorite guest episodes that we had. Um, mm. And then there's, you know, we've got Brian from Real Engineering. We've got loads of people we could talk to. Um, I'd love to, I'd, I'd honestly take any excuse to work with Brian on a project. He's great. Um, mm. Well, we had an absolute romp in um, Amsterdam. In Amsterdam, we? we did, yes. Um, yeah. The night, the night to end all nights. And oh, yeah, with that insanely expensive cocktail bar on top of that hotel. Yeah. yeah. That's great. Uh, um, so yeah, actually, I mean, if uh, dear reader, you have any ideas of people that you would l- you think would work on this show that you know you would like to see us talk to about? Not re- it's not an interview. It's basically a chat about not very much. It's a it's a Wikipedia enabled discussion. But if you think yeah. of uh, there'd be somebody who would suit that, then uh, do let us know. You can pop us an email at spongyelectric at gmail dot com. Um, of course, actually, <laughs> I, I should. I, I never actually ran it by you. I probably should apologize for this, Dan. That uh, the last thing we put on Sponge and Electric was a music video, um, which I made. <laughs> and um, oh yes, yes, and it was, it's, it's, it's certainly something. Um, which was my. Um, I wish it could be Festag every day, which I nearly put mm. on my main channel, but I thought it would just confuse. Uh, just confuse the hell out of my regular audience who don't know about the Oxcast or Warhammer. Um, so yes, yeah, so if, if you can check with that. Sponge and Electric is our YouTube channel, and I think I'd like to put more stuff up on there, which I feel like we say every year. But um, increasingly, with the with my main channel getting more and more um, popular and getting more and more of really being a show, I quite like having somewhere that I can basically sh- post. Um, mm. So I, you know, I'd be very up, very very up for um, for putting m- more stuff on on that channel. I just try. So, hang on. What? How do we do this again, Dan? What? What, what comes after when we talk about the the Wikipedia article? Um, I think. No, don't we have my your choral piece of the piece week? Of the week. <laughs> and this will be my piece of the week. Drum roll, please. I and I know exactly what I'm going to choose. Mm-hmm. Because it's been in my head, I've been playing it as on my walk to work uh, daily, and it's been absolutely fantastic. So, um, on recommendation from a a dear friend and sickeningly gifted musician, um, my choral piece of the week. And Simon, before I go into detail about it, it's a it's a movement from a mass. Mm-hmm. It's a Gloria. Mm-hmm. And if I were to describe to you the enormity, the filthy, just incredible noise that this mass has, it makes both the Longley and the Vierne Mass Solennelle look like Locus Iste by... <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. It's absolutely incredible. It's from the Mess Sa- Salve Regina, by Yves uh, Castagnier, I think I, I'm going to butcher that French, but C A S T A G N E T. Right. Uh, and it's filthy and French and massive. And I think uh, when I was describing this to the f- to the friend who recommended it to me, I said it's the musical equivalent of lighting a post-coital cigarette and taking a swig of a really good bur- a really good um, Bordeaux wine. It's just, it's so French and fantastic. Um, to give, to read us, to give you an idea, I'm going to send Simon a link to this piece now. Mm-hmm. He's going to listen to the first, let's say 45 seconds of it. <laughs> oh, that is filthy. That is absolutely filthy, and I love it. That's that's getting listened to in full later. Wow. It's huge. It's absolutely huge. And I can't help but I've just played the first 10 seconds now, and I'm grinning like a fool. <laughs> it's just... It's just it's amazing. It's completely transportive. Um, it's recorded um, in uh, Notre, uh, Notre Dame. Uh, de Paris. Yes. Um and uh, at the end of the recording, uh, the the organist finally lifts off at the end of this just massive chord, which doesn't really, it doesn't 
to our kind of English ear resolve as we'd like. It's just really kind of filthy and strong and <laughs> broad. And he finally lifts off and you just get 10 seconds of it ringing out through this enormous acoustic. Oh. And it's it's transportive. It's, it's, I love it. This is going to be one to listen to with really good headphones. Oh, I'm looking forward yeah. to this. So that's, that comes on recommendation from uh, Peter Stevens. And it's absolutely marvellous. And it's changed my life. Speaking of life changing, Dan, I want to mm. briefly take a diversion into a corner that we haven't gone into. Well, we haven't gone to any corners for quite some time, but really for quite some time. I want to very quickly divert into Critics Corner. All right, all right, all right. Now we're in Critics Corner because I had a life changing experience. And that life changing experience was cats. Cats, 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 cats. Good God, Dan. Uh, yes. Have you yes. seen the movie Cats? <laughs> I have not yet. No, we're currently trying to plan a a Coral Scholar outing to see it where we'll be suitably, um, we'll be imbibing. I'm not entirely sure what we'll be imbibing, <laughs> yet, but, but certainly something. Oh, I, could, um, I cannot stress enough simultaneously how you need to see this. But also, you need to be under the influence. I mean, I was I, I was hammered when I went to see it. Um, yeah. And o- honestly, I I had the best time. Um, I just came out with a group of friends and we sat down in a pub and had another drink to get over <laughs> to sort of try and process what we'd seen and just write down a bunch of questions. The movie is utterly bizarre, and it may be the most fun I've ever had in a theater. Um, it, it wasn't quite the same as The Room because we're, we're very British. Um, by the end, people were outright laughing at some of the stuff that was happening. Because obviously, you know, normally in a movie, in, in maybe maybe people don't know in, in the audience, if you're in the UK, you don't catcall the film. You're not a very... We're not very vocal people, you know, compared to Americans, for example. Um, whereas, yeah, by the end of this, people were just outright howling. Um and if I was to go back and watch it again, I would 100% go in with the intention of, like The Room or like the Rocky Horror Picture Show, call out, you know, whatever is yeah. happening on screen. I think the next time I go in, what I might like to try and make happen is to bring a red laser pointer with me. And when I know when a character's going to look in a certain direction, like sweep the laser pointer, um, yeah. that's that, I think that could be quite a fun spectator game. Uh, it's, it, I, I, it broke me, Dan. Uh, and I, I want you to go and see it so that we can do an episode where we f- properly talk about it. And we do almost like a greatest generation, I think, where we actually discuss in detail, scene by scene, this movie. Mm-hmm. Oh, God, I love it. <laughs> I'm just I've just put I've just put cats into Google Images as in the film. And just some of the faces are uh, it's just haunting. I think the the moment that actually broke me, the moment when my brain, like a crystal, just like fractured, was mm. Ray. Win- <laughs> Ray Winston is in this movie as a cat, obviously, and basically right. turns, leers at the screen, and kind of going meow. <laughs> like, <laughs> it just, it just floored me. I can't. I couldn't. There's no coming back from that. You know. Um, no, I have heard. That the, the the one moment in the film that everyone raves about and is it says it's just genu- genuinely brilliant and fantastic and it's the one redeeming moment of the film is when Ian McKellen's scenes are there. Oh uh, yeah, because he's just you know he's just hamming it up. He's being a, a, a theatrical lovey, um, yeah, and, and just going f- he's going full Ian McKellen. That's why it's great. I do have to see it. I really do. So that just wanted to to briefly go into our, our, our critics' corner just just to relay that important important information. Um, what what do we do now again? Do we? Well, I was going to say, speaking, given that we're in Critics Corner and we've been talking about tra- uh, Transylvania, Louisiana, it's probably worth noting um, that on here on 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 this side of the world in the UK, we've had a I thought I personally really enjoyed a, uh, an exciting adaptation of um, Bram Stoker's Dracula. Oh uh, no, I haven't seen any of this. Ah, now it's the it's the. Stephen Moffat and um, Mark Gatiss, Love Child. So it's it's suitably overly thought through and kind of witty and clever, too clever at times. Um, and it does make you you kind of you roll your eyes a bit. But at the same time, it's Dracula, so it's 
it's quite cool and it's a bit scary and it's very clever and I thought it's really great. So if you haven't seen that yet, I would say it's worth a watch. Okay. I mean, I, I, Moffat's a bit take it or leave it for me, really. But yeah. I might have to give it a go. I mean, currently I'm watching The Next Generation. I'm still working through Star Trek. I'm at season six now. Uh, so I've not got Can't too long to go. Um, considering there are like 26 episodes or whatever it is in each season as well it's it's been mm. a lot of viewing uh that the expanse uh we're continuing to watch waterloo road i can't remember if we're, i was watching waterloo road when we last did the show but pixel girl bloody loves um uh come, working in a school for eight hours a day and then coming back and um you know continuing to watch stuff about a fictional school it's just complete completely normal behavior but yeah we've been watching yeah, that yeah. Um, oh, and uh, Parks and Rec. We're still working through Parks and Rec. God, I've got a lot on my oh, classic. Not on my plate at the moment, actually. God, it's... I binge watched Messiah. Oh, as in the Netflix series. What did you think? Excellent. Absolutely excellent. Really, really very good indeed. I also, I think what I'd recommend more than anything else is Marriage Story, the film yeah, on Netflix. I've heard so many good things about this. Wow, it's fantastic. It's really, really powerful. Mm-hmm. Um absolutely brilliant and the, and the one film i'm yet to watch which i've also heard incredibly good things is two popes with um was it anthony hopkins and uh, who's that other guy who's in game of thrones uh, oh i can't remember oh um charles dance no he played the high septim oh him uh, i can't remember his name but i know exactly what you mean. yeah um his name is jonathan price yes that's the one See, I mean, I'm really looking forward to seeing um, 1917. And I still need to see Knives Out. Knives Out is meant to be utterly fantastic. Uh, and I still haven't, yeah, seen, I haven't it. seen that. So Yeah, 1917, I think I'm going to go and see on Saturday. And I want to go and see, is it Jojo Rabbit? Oh, yes. God, there's, oh, we've got a lot of viewing to do, Dan. We, there's some good films out. We, we really, really have a lot to get on with. Well, th- th- let's not waste any time. Next up, we mm. need to help me out here. Um, is it Patreon Corner? I think it's Patreon. I think it's Patreon. Top lad. Well done. Relationship. Whilst whilst uh, whilst we we'd work out the uh, terrible UI uh, that is Patreon's back end. Um, mm-hmm. what what is Patreon, Dan? Well, Patreon is the time in the episode where we thank our incredibly generous uh, wonderful patrons for keeping this podcast alive he says knowing that we've been silent for nearly two and a half months <laughs> um without without your support we would have been even quieter than silent in those two and a half months um and it is with uh, with that support that we're returning with such gusto this year ready to uh, inspire amaze and generally wow everyone with our organizational skills and razor sharp witty conversation um and uh this this poignant informative entirely necessary podcast i mean yeah the, this podcast is absolute th- th- there's no reason it should exist basically the only reason it does exist is because of our patrons on patreon.com forward slash the wikicast uh, it's all your fault is what i'm trying to say um yeah uh you know people who like the show are very welcome to um support it that pays for our lovely editor adam um best of luck with your exams adam when you listen to this um uh, it also pays for like our uh hosting our pod being hosting but you know it means that we're not running the podcast at a net loss basically um yeah. so effectively these are the people that keep the lights on um and if you after hearing one episode if you're a new reader uh or <laughs> if you want to support our our show if you've been a long time uh, uh reader then you can do so but at the same time we realize we're not offering very much in return so if you don't want to fair enough that's cool too uh would you like to thank any of our patrons dan i i would love to i would like to thank uh some of our top dogs uh you you're either team cat or team dog in this glorious podcast you're either right and or wrong team- yes Team dot yeah right or wrong right for dogs wrong for cats and I'd like to start by 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 thanking our top dogs so without further ado I'd like to say a huge thank you to in fact oh golly we've I've, there's 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 some new top dogs here oh I see some new names and what better name to start with than I think we can all agree this is a sickeningly cool name Alistair Fortune oh. Mwah. 
That's a great, and wow. I recognise that name as well. It's a fantastic name. Thank you, Alistair. Uh, we also have Ben McMurtry, Colin J. Brown, Eric Shun, Eric Bolliger, Jackson. I cannot even attempt to pronounce that last name. De Bor- De Borgskovski, <laughs> Kodzo, Lucas Schumann, Maggie, Peter Reed, Samantha, and Valerie. I would like to thank, on the other hand, the top cats, the people who support us on patreon.com forward slash the wikicast with the top cat tier at $5 a month. And those are, of course, Chaco Cat, Cole Mansfield, Dan Hanvey, Isabel Ostrowski, John Mannion, Kenneth Kuzmirek, I'm going to go with. Why not? Uh, Leila Medina, Lewis Watson, Oliver Burkhart, Oliver Craigie, Omar Miranda, Princess Andromeda, Rents Cook, River Ward, and William Humphreys. Thank you so much, everybody who supports the show. Like we say, you make it possible. You you pay for this show, make sure we don't run it at a loss. So thank you very, very much for that. Now on with the show. What do we do next? Um, I don't know. Let's just, let's just play a jingle and see. Dirk, what ah. Now, I think this is where we would normally do correspondence, Dan. Um, yes. And I think we do have a couple of emails, but... It, we do, you, actually. Surprisingly. We have some. We have We have some. We have some. We have some. Um, would you like to read some? <laughs> yeah. I, you know what? I, I'd love to. And, and I'm going to jump straight in with an email from Will Alsop. Um, I see immediately it's titled why you have... Coral Peace Recommendation. <laughs> yes. And he goes on to say, Hello, good sirs. It's Edinburgh Dark Matter Talk Guy checking in again. Hey! Now, a second year physicist at Manchester who's very confused about his. Lagrangian. Lagrangian. Thank you. <laughs> Lagrangian dynamics course. Oh, God, help. Yeah, it's pretty confusing. Last week in my choir, we sang the most wonderful mass, and I couldn't not share it with you. Uh, on the off chance you've not heard it before, it's become one of my favourites in the last few, few weeks of learning it. It's the Walton Missa Brevis. Let me know if you enjoy it or you've done it before. The Walton Missa Brevis is an awesome. Uh, an awesome mass setting I know it very well um, and it's got a particularly uh, some particularly challenging moments um, certainly I know as a tenor there's some um, there's some solo in the I want to say Agnes Dei can you remember doing this in chapel yeah this is the one that has the very long run at the very beginning of the Gloria I think so it's like a little bit because I atonal or something In the on your stay, it's got the um, and it's all that really, sounds about right, yeah. It's all quite, um, yeah, atonal. Um, very cool though, yeah. and, and the, the glory is huge, very cool. Um, and and also, it's the it's the it's the really good album, Walton Choral Works, um, uh, with uh, Christchurch Cathedral, which is the album I have, and it's it's awesome. <laughs> Uh, I, I've just um, had a look at uh, some of our other emails here. Uh, and uh, in November, late November, we had an email from a noiseless moose, <laughs> uh, which is very exciting. Uh, it reads, to Simon Clark in Pink and Yellow and Comic Sans and Stuart Little, greetings ah. from another place at another time, perhaps from that little planet at the centre of the black void tucked away neatly at the bottom of the crevice between tomorrow and yesteryear. Lovely. Oh boy, Dan, it's, it's, it's one of these emails. Uh, I've been a mm. long-time reader of your little program, and as you have unexpectedly become a reliable joy in my otherwise shockingly mediocre existence, I've decided to write to you to offer some words of gratitude. Um, like so many others who find myself firmly and uncomfortably planted between my passion and my disposition. As an international educator responsible for building cultural bridges between students of many nations, I am constantly called upon to be a strong, guiding voice. I'm never alone in my work, and I'm always speaking, listening, or writing. For an extrovert, that might, like, look... Bleh, bleh, bleh. For an extrovert, this might seem like heaven. For me, however, it's like having Attack of the Clones beamed directly into my retinas whilst Yakety Sax blares at full volume. I love my work, and while the ends certainly justify the means in my view, the means make me anxious, self-doubting, and profoundly aware that I can never measure up to my own expectations, let alone the expectations of others. Several years ago, while leading a program for undergrads to Edinburgh, Simon's channel popped into my recommended videos. I watched one video, then another, and another, and another, until it was morning... Good grief. And I found myself waking, walking, 
<laughs> very nearly misread that. I found myself walking with a smile yeah. on my face for the rest of the day. Since then, I've been rewatching those videos and devouring episodes of this podcast nearly daily. Your friendship and the content you produce together has truly become a sort of therapy for me. And I must say thank you from the bottom of my heart. When I need to hide, I hide with you in my ears. When I need a laugh, Daniel's forehead beams a cheery grin onto my face. You oh, do you so much <laughs> more than produce a silly little podcast and non-content. What you do matters. Thank you both. I'll write again when the mood strikes. I applaud Simon for recognising you need to step back a bit. We'll all still be here. Well, yes, you are. You're still here on our inbox when we came back. Um, Hurrah. Hopefully now you've like just about worked through the back catalogue of episodes and, you know, we, we've now uh, given you a new one to, to look forward to. With you in it, a noiseless moose. Um, uh, oh, uh, hang on, sorry. There, were, there are four little notes here. Um, Team Cat can suck a dick. Play the amazing ornithology born game Wingspan. Oh, this is interesting. Ooh. Do either of you have a Goodreads account where one can find book recommendations? Do you, Dan? I don't know. I, I like to keep my reading entirely anonymous and private. No, I just I haven't um I haven't got around to it. I really ought to. Yeah, that's fair enough. Um, you ha- you have one, don't you? I, I do. Yes, it's all all over my socials. If you've got my Twitter, it's um in the little links at the top. Uh, and then the lastly, a noiseless moose challenges us both to a painting competition to find a games workshop model under twenty five pound and paint it. Um. I mean, I'd obviously be up for this, but um, I mean, you you enjoy painting, don't you? I used to, yeah, I used to, I used to paint loads. The 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 sad thing is now, all of I've still got my my old Games Workshop carry case with all of my models in, but all of my paint has dried up. It's, mm. I need to buy a full new set of paints. It, it so. requires quite the outlay. Um, yeah. When when you start again, because I yeah. I went through this over the past how many months, um. So yes, I totally totally get that. I don't want to know how much I've spent on Games Workshop this past but year. Perhaps I will. Maybe I maybe I I'll pop into. Um... Oh, but well, hang on, Exodus it's, Games it's Workshop is is moving, isn't it? Yeah, it's not closing. Well, it is closing down, but it's closing down and then reopening in a new uh, premises. Um, because it still had all the old branding, so it was actually one of the last ones to go. But well, you know, the next time I'm down in Exeter, which I'm not quite sure when it will be, but uh, maybe I should bring sort of a, a we we could both work from the same palette of paint, so we both paint the same model. That could be Lovely. quite a fun um, sponge in electric video, actually. Absolutely. Um, so yes, we we could absolutely do that. We could try um, and paint. We could try and paint <clears throat> models while slightly drunk or very drunk of our characters of our characters from our fan fiction. Ooh, that's an idea. Yeah. Yes, I like that idea a lot. So we we could yeah we can absolutely do that. A noiseless moose that's a excellent suggestion. I think excellent, we'll excellent work. A noiseless moose. We'll, we'll we'll have a think. We have another email here from Rory Powell, and this is titled Correspondence Corner: Kandersteg Memories and PhD Hopes. Dear Messrs. Clark and Moore, I just watched the Jingle Jam with Simon doing the big fat quiz of the decade. Great job, Simon. By the way. Oh, thank you. The photo that was shared of Simon 10 years ago on his way to Kandersteg International Scout Centre brought back lovely memories of my own trip to the KISC in 2013. Not quite 10 years, unfortunately. Oh, God, I thought so you might younger. enjoy seeing my own comparison of then and now, so I've attached the only picture of myself at KISC that I could find, in which I am incredibly sweaty and sleep-deprived walking up a mountain, as well as a recent picture of myself still doing some scouty things. I'm on the left in both pictures. Oh, Simon yes. to Simon... So, oh, sorry, Simon to Simon. Similar to Simon... <laughs> I don't think I've really changed all that much, just grown some facial hair. Yeah, you, you, you actually have a very similar facial expression in both. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah, and, I see it now. And, you know, how many, whatever that is, six years of, of sleep deprivation have had the same effect as walking up a mountain? That's actually quite <laughs> striking how similar yeah. you look. Unrelated, uh, I have recently decided for sure that I want to do a PhD after I finish my integrate, integrated master's degree, four year course, in my fourth year currently, because obviously four years of university isn't enough. Quite but right. I just wanted to thank Simon for all his PhD related content over the years, as well as part of what informed my decision to have a go at one myself. Or, as always, keep up the great weekly in, in most <laughs> content. Yours, Rory, aged approximately 15 and 2 plus 35. No, 15 over 2 plus 34 over 5 plus 79 over 10. There you go. So a, a combination of fractions. Oh, I love it. Well, um, well, Rory and anybody else who likes my PhD content, I am very happy to say that this month, um, it should be in about two weeks, I'm starting a new series on my channel where I'm going to be looking at other people's PhD um, projects and spending a couple of days with them and learning about them and their research. So a bit like a Louis Theroux type uh, mm. documentary series, but each episode is a different person with doing a different PhD. So um, the first one is all about ethnomusicians 
musicology and then after that i'm going to cern in a next next week oh my god it's next week um uh, to interview another phd and then after that there's going to be somebody doing history at oxford i think uh who's using a new digital system um that's lot that, that i'm really looking forward to doing this series because a load of people have message saying that they really liked the um the phd content and that it was you know influential and in th- making them think about if they wanted to do a project um so I really hope that you like this new stuff as well. So Rory, you've got some stuff to look forward to. Now everything mm. else is it's pretty old. It's like yeah. September. Well, do you want to um, do you want to sort of say that basically? Yes, I I really want to say that, and so I, sh- <laughs> and so I shall say that now. Oh, it's so natural. And so it's so he's just he just takes to it like a like a duck to custard. It's you like know, watching it's Tom just, Hanks. Yeah. It's like watching Tom Hanks, yeah. So we're 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 going through our correspondence now, and and there is there's a there's a few more emails actually that have, that have accumulated over the um our brief let's say brief spell, um away from the airwaves. Um, however, they are they are from like September last year. Um, so I think what's best is that Simon and I. We've just been reading them now to ourselves, but we're probably not going to include all of the discussion in uh, in this episode simply because it's so long ago and and semi redundant now. But thank you so much for your for your emails in. We absolutely adore hearing from you. It's my um, favorite part of the show, honestly. Yeah, for get, sure. getting emails. Absolutely. So um so now that we're back, um perhaps given that our own New Year's resolutions were so disappointing. Um, <laughs> if you'd like to email in to spongyelectric at gmail.com with your own New Year's resolutions or what's, what your plans you have for, for 2020, whether you're thrilled or absolutely gutted that this podcast has returned. Um, <laughs> I, for one, dear, dear Dan and Simon, I am gutted that your podcast is back. <laughs> I thought that I'd gotten away from you two hack frauds, but yeah. no. <laughs> I now have to listen to another nearly hour of terrible content every week. I am appalled. Somebody's going to send us that exact email, aren't they? Yours, yours angrily, Milton Keynes. <laughs> Full you, out Milton of five. Keynes. Nobody Two likes out of five you. The Guardian. <laughs> Not even people who live in Milton Keynes like Milton Keynes. I'll, I'll, I will, I will have a beef with that city to the day I die. I swear. Yeah. Not the loveliest, it's safe to say. <laughs> We're going to have so many listeners in Milton Keynes, aren't we? Oh, boy. Get, just le- you, just because you can put a roundabout everywhere, Milton Keynes, doesn't mean that you should, all right? Mm. Just put some straight roads somewhere, for f***'s sake. Uh, oh, boy. I got very motion sick when I was going from Oxford to Cambridge on the bus every week um, and uh, going through Milton Keynes because there were just <laughs> so many roundabouts. I've got, like, this, oh! I've, got of, I've got this image of you driving through Milton Keynes like that but instead it what's it's dubbed what's dubbed over is the video from people who do like g-force testing but, uh, <laughs> <in> the, <laughs> you're like and and tense 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 you go around this corner and your face just drops <laughs> <laughs> it's like Lovely. being in a t- it's just like being in a tumble dryer going around the city yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> pick it up pick it up g4 <laughs> four g's going around yeah. the ring road <laughs> Well, if you're from Milton Keynes, do let us know. How many Gs have you picked up at Milton Keynes? Send us an email. Um, bloody hell. Well, that's probably at, all, all at, the... Uh, it's bungieelectric at gmail.com. Uh, uh, that is probably all we have time for, though. Um, wait, we have an outro, don't we? We do. Um, let's just see how that goes, shall we? So, Simon, what what have we learned today? Uh, Dan, we've learned precious little today, if I'm honest with you. Um, but we we officially learned about Transylvania, Louisiana, which is an unincorporated community in East Carroll Parish, Louisiana, uh, not to be confused with uh, Transylvania, Romania. I'm just going to double check the Wikipedia. Not to be confused with Transylvania, Romania, uh, so named after an alumnus of a university which was named after a colony which was named that way because it had some woods in it. Um, In Kentucky. In Kentucky, because of course. Of all places. Where else would it be? Um, and then we learned about what we've been up to for the past couple of months. We did. We did. And it was it was lovely catching up. I'm so glad that our yeah. dear listeners have, has, have been here to share in uh, in the reunion. The Wikicast is back with with a vengeance. Because we've learned that we're back year. every two weeks. That's that's the other key thing. And, you know, we're so organised, we put recording dates in our diary for the next month. We so have. It's incredible. And with... And with Recording every two weeks gives you readers um, 
oodles of time to do Oodle. lots of thrilling, exciting things and email us and tell us about them. Yeah, we look forward to receiving your correspondence. Um, and I believe the next line is yours, Dan. It is, but the font is suddenly gone all small and I can't read it. <laughs> <laughs> hang on a hang on a hot second. Let me just bump this up. Here we go. That's better. <clears throat> hang on a hot groin. Oh dear. <laughs> and swallow raw eggs. Eggs. And uh must be, must be hard work. <laughs> <laughs> uh we're all just sweet transvestites, really, aren't we? From Transylvania, Louisiana. <laughs> Indeed, yeah. And that's all for this week's episode. Don't forget to subscribe to us on your podcasting service of choice. You can like us on Facebook. And if you'd like to see our faces, check out our YouTube channel, Spongy and Electric. I'm fully aware that that is really completely redundant in the end of that outro <laughs> because there is, there's literally nothing. I don't think there's anything on that channel with our faces on it. Uh, well, no, no, my face is in the most recent thing behind a beard. Uh, yeah, okay, okay sorry, I'll do that again. And if you'd like to see Simon's face, <laughs> check out our YouTube channel, Spongy and Electric. New Year's resolutions, angry messages about us being back and other thoughts on the show can be sent to us at spongyelectric at gmail.com we'd love to hear from you join us again for another tumble down the wiki rabbit hole and we'll see you next time uh oh god i need to think of some stuff to put in here um new year's resolutions oh yeah new, um people new year's... we're going to have guests oh no i know hang on um New Year's resolutions, letters which are uh, hang on, hang on. Um, yeah, <laughs> oh, no, no, I know. I, I just had to rephrase it in my mind. <laughs> did you hear? Did you hear the anger in your voice? No, 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 no. Oh, cough. <laughs> um, <laughs> oh, we're back. oh God, I missed doing this.